Welcome back. Today we're going to do a quick overview of Citrus PA11 Nylon 11 Carbon Fiber material, one of the strongest and most versatile materials available on the powder market, dedicated to SLS printing technology and available for the Lisa Pro, Lisa X, and NILS 480 systems. So let's talk about first off, where are you going to see this material used? Why would you want to use it? Uh, number one, production maintenance, replacement parts, fixtures, jigs, etc. cetera. Uh, in automotive, high performance parts, metal replacement parts, or extreme applications like motorsports, lightweight structures, high temperature applications. In aerospace, again, lightweight structures. For research applications, mechanical parts or composite elements, molds, things of that nature, or even in medicine, medical equipment, or even prosthetics. You're getting super rigid, super tough material to work with. So what kind of machine do you actually need? It does require the use of inert gas in order to achieve the highest quality result. That means you got to use nitrogen or something like that in the build chamber while it's going because PA11 at the elevated temperatures likes to oxidize and that kind of messes around with the mechanical properties and even surface finish. Uh, now the refresh ratio is around 40%. So basically you do a build with fresh powder, take out all your parts and then take all that powder, add 44% or 40% more fresh material in it, mix it up, sift it, and then you use all that powder back in the next build. Now the melting point is around 197 Celsius with a heat deflection of around 170 to 190 Celsius. It's got a flexural strength of 100 megapascals, tensile of 81 megapascals, a tensile modulus or Young's modulus of 2950 megapascals, and an impact strength on the Charpy unnotched method of 113.65 kilojoules per meter squared. Now, there's more data available. They're all in the technical data sheet. So if you want more juicy details, go to visionminer.com slash and check out those links. But for now, let's check out some example parts. In my hands today, right now, I have this excellent example part. Uh, this is a pretty cool one. It's uh, basically a handle that you would put on something and turn it around. So this was, yeah, that's sweet. Uh, this was printed in one part, uh, probably in this orientation orientation right actually can I tell what orientation uh, generally you want to print circles facing straight up so that you get the best accuracy and, and tolerances around it but again printed in one part this is some sort of bracket uh, type thing and uh, let's dive into some photos for some more ideas and examples of what you could use this material for all right so right there you know because of its rigidity and it's lightweight. Uh, drone frames is a huge one. Uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with those little tiny whoops out there, uh, but everybody, the crew here, we love RC. We love electronics and robots, so RC just comes naturally. Uh, but making little frames, we've actually done this in FDM, and now we're gonna have to try it in SLS to see how lightweight and actually strong these things can come out. Uh, but that's a pretty cool example. So little consumer toys. We got some medical devices, looks like. Some sort of uh, thing for holding a syringe of some kind. We've got some uh, the enclosures that look like they would be strong and possibly dissipate some heat with built-in heat sinks. Uh, obviously some brackets and some hooks and things of that nature. More drone parts, shrouds for fans, things like that. Um, Definitely some cool ones. You could use this obviously in anything else. You can use PA11, nylon 11, where you can use that, you can use this. This is just gonna be a much more rigid and strong version of that. Um, so anywhere you can use nylon and you want it to be extra stiff, then this would be a great, great application. Crazy geometries are possible. There's one of the things about SLS printing is you don't need support material. Support material is basically, if I were to print this, just that little overhang under there would require other material in FDM to support it. Now this is actually, I can see the layer lines now, it was printed in that orientation. If you tried that in the FDM, you'd have all sorts of materials. In SLS, the powder itself supports the parts, so you can actually do very complex geometries without any support material. You just take it out of the cake, as we call it, uh, that big powder square, and brush it off, and then sandblast it, and you've got your part. No removal of supports. It's uh, much more efficient in general for certain applications. If you're making a product, and or maybe it's an accessory for a hobby or something like that, and you can say that it's made with a carbon fiber material, I mean, you know, uh, we may not like it, but marketing's there. It's a real thing. You know, people, I mean, there's people buying 
3D printers that are like specifically dedicated to carbon fiber. And what does that actually mean? Well, you got a polymer with carbon fiber in it and you just need a hardened steel nozzle. It's not really that much more complex than that. The printer isn't necessarily made for that, but it's a marketing thing. So say you're making handles or something or, or grips or something of that nature, and it's got carbon fiber in it. I mean, that's just a, it's a value add. Plus you're getting the added material benefits of the rigidity and the strength and everything else. It's carbon fiber, man, you know? So, it's pretty cool, but realistically, when it comes to the rigidity and everything, using something like PA11, it can be a huge advantage for a multitude of applications. Just a little bit of inspiration to get your brains going. Let us know down in the comments below what you would like to print in these materials, if it's a business case or just for fun. Uh, if you do have a business case, definitely reach out. If you send us your model, we can give you a ROI breakdown. How much it costs per part at what quantities, and we include everything from the electrical cost to the powder cost to the depreciation of the machine. So it's a really, really robust report depending what parts you're actually looking at doing. And uh, as always, check out our other videos. Uh, we've got all kinds of systems Systems for high temp FDM, for peak and ultimate and extreme thermoplastics, 3D scanners, 3D scanning, and now of course SLS. We're always here to help, so just reach out, shoot us an email, or give us a call. We're here to help answer your questions and get you the right equipment for your business. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a positive rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next video.